So friends, continuing, continuing this deal on Texas family law and how you can avoid costs, how you can minimize your expenses, or at least be aware of places where your expenses can be increased. And one of the things we're talking about is the prolonging, right? A lot of these all have the same underlying message. We are prolonging the duration of the lawsuit, of the family law dissolution, right? If it's property division, are we resisting giving up information in discovery? And I'm gonna tell you that is not a big one to stand your ground on. For the most part, let me give you an example, a, a, a number of how excited, uh, on a scale of one to 10, a judge is when they hear parties coming into court fighting about questions that they have asked the other side. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the highest and one being the lowest, judges are excited to the tune of zero. They have zero patience for discovery disputes. Unless the questions are unfair and, and discovery, let me talk about what that means real quick. And in a family law case, right, the first thing that happens is somebody files a lawsuit, somebody answers the lawsuit. The next thing that happens is the 60 day cooling off period. And in that cooling off period, no one's allowed to get remarried, nobody's allowed to get divorced, nobody's allowed to do anything. You're to cool off for 60 days, but you can do a few things. You can exchange discovery. Discovery is a fancy word for saying written questions to each other about assets, debts, things that happened in the marriage, etc. Things that have a factor on who's the best parent, who's got the assets, where are the savings accounts, where's the retirement accounts. Those are fair questions and the parties, they, they, don't, they don't have a obligation to exchange that information. They got, really, they got a duty because you can't do a property division without, without that, right? You cannot dissolve your marriage without doing that. So stand in your ground. I'm not going to, I'm not going to answer this. Unless the question is really unfair. Again, back in the video segment where I was talking about the, the fight over the $50 item wasn't worth the attorney's fees. The fight over the fairness of the question isn't worth the attorney's fees for the hearing. So if you wanna control your costs in a family law case, transparency, even if you think that the, the questions are somewhat unfair, transparency is your friend. And here's another thing, you're gonna save yourself the danger of the fee shifting risk when you go down to the courthouse and you go, hey judge, I've looked in my car, I've shaken out my wallet, I, I, I gave all my bank record. If you have done your due diligence and you don't have any other things to, sh to show, produce or provide, that's the kind of answer, that's the kind of diligence that the courts will protect you from, right? When you're the hide the ball client, when you're the client who's like, I'm not giving that up, there's no way, over my dead body am I gonna show X. Well. That's where you're opening yourself up to risk. And again, time is money, right? And the longer you're in a family law case, the more likely the chance is you're gonna increase the amount of money you're gonna spend to stay in that family law case. So unless it's an unfair question, transparency is your friend. If you have documents that are reasonably available to you, transparency is your friend. I'm not saying give up the ship. What I am saying is, Make sure that the fight, if you're gonna stand your ground, make sure it's meritorious. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Questions or comments, chat at ashmorelawfirm.com. Chat at ashmorelawfirm.com. More in the studio on Family Law next.